Now it looks like the protozoa are swimming fairly straight, but um, Dr. Stokes, who's up at, I think he's still up at um, UMaine, took all this in slow motion with it, and what he found out is they're actually corks growing through the fluid. And the first time you watch it in slow motion, you, I get seasick. I'm just like, oh. Uh, because I'm used to seeing them swim like this. Now I can watch it and it doesn't phase me at all. But the first time it's like, microscope, looking, no, seasickness hit. Oh. So there is still a lot of work being yeah, done. And now I can I, I can watch them and say, yeah, there's I can kind of see the corks growing because I've seen it in slow motion. So. Um, there's still a lot of work being done with protozoa. They still haven't figured everything out yet. Um, and when I come into the class, I have some really nice pictures that we're taking with scanning electron microscopes so, and so forth that we'll look at. So that's the Roman protozoa. Now, there's three reasons we have cannulated cows. Ooh. You're not going to find a cannulated cow on a normal dairy farm. Um, they're mainly in, in in research facilities, whether it's a university or other research facilities. One is for research. Okay. That is their primary function. Um, whether it's we're feeding ca things to cows and we want to know how we're affecting those microbial populations or the work I'm going to be doing in six days where we're looking at some rumen protected amino acids, it's a research function. That's their primary function. Secondary function is teaching. You guys got to put your arm inside a cow today. Not too many people do it. Actually, there's more people out there than I think. Because <laughs> every anatomy and physiology class has had to do it, uh, along with some other classes we have here at UNH. Okay. And it's also used in ruminology and some other classes that are taught here.